All right, guys, so good evening once again. So today we are going to be looking at equations and inequations. All right, so I'm, I'm going to move a little quick, rather quickly through this first section of equation because I know you would have been familiar with how to solve an equation already. You have been solving equation from we started at, um, on day one, once you, from we were looking at sets, we were, we were kind of solving equation, but I've never touched the topic itself formally so that we are going through it. So I'm going to just quickly go through. This topic will be so much, so, somewhat of a review for most of you because you would have met this topic at some point in time. All right, so um, starting off with what is an equation and why, what is an inequation? Can anybody give me their idea of an equation and what they think an inequation is? And I would like if you volunteer and just give your opinion rather, rather than have me calling on you. Anyone? There are equations of terms and involve an equal sign. All right, so most importantly, it has an equal sign. What else? It can be solved. Well, yes, it can be solved. Anything you want to add to that, Ms. Wilson? No, oh, sir, not to equation, but... Um, in equation? Well, for in equation, sir, um, I think is that when we, we, we can't determine the, 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 the correct answer, but we can maybe you know, have like an estimate, just like with the sign so where we say um, X can be either equal to three or four within the range. So it's not equal, equal, but you get what I'm saying, sir? All right. So, yes, I, I, kind of, I get what you're saying, Ms. Wilson. I understand exactly what you're trying to explain. I will explain it for you. Um, yeah. so, so equation generally has balance. Left yeah. hand side and right hand side are balanced. So, so they have the same weight, so to speak. Yeah, uh, sure. But inequation sometimes are oftentimes called inequality, meaning that you don't have a balance. One side is generally um, more than the other. Yes, that is what I say. Like the more and less these days are. So we yeah. generally have symbol like less than are greater yes, than. Sir less than and so on and so we'll also learn how to treat with those all right but you know just i just want you to have a sense of what we're dealing with all right so these are the general ob objectives i'm not going to spend any time on the objectives so it's a de defined equation as a mathematical statement which expresses balance between two sets of quantity with an equal sign, all right? So you are to be able to solve one-step equations with addi addition and subtraction. Also, you are able to solve one-step equation with multiplication and division and solve simple linear equations, right? And we may do a little bit more than what these objectives are saying. All right, so the definition is here, it's an equation as an equation is a mathematical statement which expresses balance between two sets of quantity with an equal sign. Now, with that said, you know, it, it, what should come to your mind is a balance scale because an equation is, can be depicted by a balance scale, right? And as you know, a balance scale or a beam balance you know, something what generally you'd ask um, students either at the early, early childhood primary level to generally build these things to, to get a sense of what we mean by balance. So for the balance scale, you have one side, 
with some object on it on the other side with the same amount. And so it will be balanced. All right, so we, the beam balance, both side of the equation must be the same side, same in size. All right, so equations are useful when solving for unknowns. Now, in order to maintain balance in an equation, and this is a general rule now, in order to maintain balance in an equation, whatever is done to one side of an equation, the exact same thing. Now, you know, I say exact same thing, in, in English language, that it would be a redundancy statement because both are saying the same thing, but it is used here for emphasis. So the same thing must be done to the other side. All right, so whatever you do with one side, ensure that you do the same thing to the other side. Now, when you become a little bit more familiar with what you're doing with the equation, it may not appear so readily that they are doing the same thing to both sides because of some techniques that we'll be using. But in all cases when we are solving, we really are doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. Some, some we may show, some we may not show in terms of steps. But just bear in mind that whatever we are doing, we are doing the same thing to both sides. All right, so we have types of equations. I mentioned them earlier. So we have simple or linear equation. That one you would have known if you remember what we were doing in graph in terms of a linear equation, a simple equation. Anybody can tell me some characteristics that you remember about linear equation or a simple equation? They're up a straight line, sir. Well, so if you plot them on a graph, you will get a straight line. Anything else about them that can indicate to you that they are simply equations in terms of their X and Y variables are their variables? They're based, they're just based, sir. They're just at the power of one. All right. So basically the, the powers of these variables must be one. And once you have that, you know that once you plot them on a graph, you'll get a straight line. So the next one we have simultaneous equation. And nobody can describe what simultaneous equation is. Some people say simultaneous, same thing. It's just a matter of choice. Anybody? Sir, I wanna use matrix to solve it. Okay, well, all right. So there you can use a matrix method to solve it. But um, the, the whole idea of simultaneous equation is you're, you have what we call a system of equations, meaning that you're not only dealing with just one equation now. In, in simple and linear equation, we're just solving one equation. But for a simultaneous equation, we have more than one equation that we are solving at the same time. And that's why we call it simultaneous, because if you know what the word simultaneous means, it means that you're, you know, two things are happening at the same time, two or more things, right? So um, with simultaneous equation, we generally going to have more than one equations working with and why we solve them together? Because in both are, if we are dealing with just two equations, in both these two equations, the X and Y variables will have the same value in the two equations, right? So because of that, we can do that. And there's a reason for simultaneous equation that I will explain when we, when we, when we touch that. I'll try to see how fast we can get there. All right, quadratic equation. Anybody can say anything about quadratic equation? Four parts, sir. Oh, well, <laughs> the word quadratic would suggest four parts, but 
Remember when we were factorizing those trinomials in um, the general form would be AX squared plus BX plus C, you remember those? Remember yes, what? sir. Right, those are quadratic expressions. But of course, if we attach an equal sign to it and equate it to something, it becomes an equation. So generally, quadratic equations will be of that form. And so we should be able to solve them for the unknown, which would be the, in, in that case, in most cases, will be x. So we will see how to solve those two as well. All right, things to note about equation. An, e an equation expresses balance between two sets of quantities. We can add or subtract the same amount from each side of the equation without destroying the balance. We can multiply or divide each side of the equation by the same amount without destroying the balance. And so that is a general idea. When we're working with, with the equation, we have to do whatever we're doing to both sides. All right, so to solve an equation, we generally want to keep the unknown that we are solving. And in most cases, if we are doing a simple equation, you generally going to have one variable to solve, right? And remember, we had, we had referred to variables as x and y. So in, in simple equation, you will only have either X to solve or Y to solve. You're not going to have both at the same time. Now, when we are solving equations, the, the variable that we have in the equation must be by itself on one side of the equation and everything else in terms of numbers must be on the other side and we calculate into a value. And once we calculate everything that we have on the other side into a value, then that, that variable will take that value to be the value for that variable. And so the equation will be solved. All right. Now, so quickly here we have a simple equation which should be pretty much straightforward for you guys to solve. Because if I ask you to solve this equation, what would be the answer? Quickly, somebody. Five, sir. Right. So, and what we would do generally if we're solving this equation, can anybody walk me through the steps? What we do? Sir, we take the two over to the other side. So the positive two would then change to negative two and we subtract the two from the seven, leaving five. All right. Now, now based on taking the two to the other side. We know it, 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 it is a shortcut method when we do that. That's not exactly what happened. Because as I had mentioned before, that we should be doing the same thing to, the, to both sides of the equation. So when we take it to the other side, what we're really doing, we're skipping out steps in the procedure. And by skipping out step in the procedure, it appears that we take it to the other side. But really and truly, to get rid of the two on the left-hand side, we have a plus two. So we have to minus a two from the left-hand side. And if we do that to the left-hand side, what do we do to one side? We have to do the same thing to the other side. So if we minus two on, from the left-hand side, we also would minus two on the right hand side all right so this is saying here our aim is to make um x the subject by getting rid of two if um two is added to if two is added to x so we we need to subtract two from both sides of the equation all right now i mentioned here do the opposite in bracket and that is something that I want you to bear in mind because most of the time when we are solving the equation, what we're doing, we are getting, we are getting rid of whatever number is that we have in relation to the unknown. So if it is added to it or if it is multiplied by it, when we are, we are when we are getting rid of that value beside the unknown, whether it be a coefficient 
whether it be your dividing, whether it be that you're multiplying or, or adding or subtracting, whatever the value is doing with the variable. In this case, two is being added to X. What we want to do is to do the opposite of the operation that is there. So if, we are, if the operation there is adding, the opposite to adding would be subtracting. If the two was multiplying the X, then the operation there would be multiplying. And so what we would want to do to get rid of the two would be dividing. So whatever the operation with the number and the variable, we're doing the opposite in order to make X the subject or the unknown the subject, all right? So bear that in mind. All right, so subtract two from both sides. Then, so that should be the first step. Now, if we take two from the left, we get um, zero, two from two give us zero. So here we have X equal five. So this is actually the correct procedure in solving an equation. Now, what we notice though, is that if we skip out the step on the left-hand side uh, of showing that you're subtracting two from two, but instead make it appear as if you bring it over and change the sign, then you can see where it would appear as if all that we have been doing is moving what is on the left to the right and change the sign. And, and, and it is okay to think of it in that way because it is easier to, to solve by doing that shortcut method. But it's not, the, it's not really what is happening. It's what, it is what appears to be happening, but it's not exactly what is happening. Exactly what is happening is that you're subtracting two from both sides. So ensure that you get that concept clear in your mind. All right, guys. All right, any question? So here is just a, what I'm doing here is not really some, I'm not really somewhat teaching you how to solve the equation because a lot of you know how to solve the equation already. But I'm really teaching you here is a concept of how equations are solved, all right? So here now we have X minus four. So what we should be doing here is to get rid of that four from beside the X. And so what we, would we do if we are doing it correctly, Miss Green? Sir? Yeah. Yes, sir. How would we solve this correctly, not the shortcut method? Sir, so add four to both sides. Exactly, so good. All right, so if we add four to both sides, we know that the plus four and the minus four will cancel, right? And so, we would we would we would we could ignore the cancellation of the four with the negative the, the positive four the negative on the left and then it appears as if we're adding we're bringing the four across to the side of the eight and adding it and so the answer would be 12. all right so note adding four to both sides is the same as transferring the negative four from the left to the right and change the sign. So it, it really works out to be the same result, but it gives you a different sense of what really happens. All right, so in general, bring the number across the equal sign and do the opposite operation, all right? So here we have three multiplying by X, so we want to bring the three across the equal sign and do the opposite operation. So what is the three doing to the, the X? Multiply, sir. 
All right, so we'll bring the three across and then divide. So here we would divide both sides by three, right? So this is the usual process. You divide both sides. So this is the correct way. Divide both sides by three. And so the three would cancel on the left. And on the right, now you would divide six by three. And so you will get X to be two, right? But you could have, you could have actually do the shortcut by just bring the number transfer it to the other side of the equation and do the opposite operation. So that would give you six divided by three, which would just work out to two. All right, any question? Now look at this one. How do we solve this one quickly? Miss Waysom, want to give us an idea? Or should I ask, hold on Miss Waysom, let me ask Mr. Lamar. Mr. Lamar, what do we do? Sir. Yeah, how do we solve this? So you can so you make x a subject, so you have x as a division on that side. Um so what what would you have on the other side? What 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 you're solving this? How how would you make x a subject? Two multiply by that side by by six. No. Which side, left or right? Make reference. Right. right. Left hand side, right hand side. So you are doing what with the right hand side? So you want to get rid of the six, you want to make extra subject. Right. So explain to me what to do. So you multiply that side by six. You multiply both sides by six. Both sides by six, right. But if you are doing in the transfer sense, like you move the six to the other side, then when you transfer, you do it the positive, you become multiplication. Right, so you do the opposite operation of what the six is doing to the X. So the six is dividing the X and transfer the six on the other side and multiply the three. So that you would get um, here, we said X is divided by six, so multiply both sides by six. So we would have X over six times six and that would equal three times six. All right, so, but in a shortcut sense, you could just transfer the six on the other side and then you would have X is equal to three times six, which is 80. All right, to check your answer, you put X equal 18 in the original. So you can actually check your answer for equations. You know. Whatever you solve for X, you substitute it back in the equation and see if from the left hand side, if it will give you about the same answer on the right hand side. All right, simple equations. We, we mentioned simple equations earlier. So definition here, simple equation con contains only unknown quantity raised to the power, raised to the first power or the first degree. And what that simply means is that the power of the variables equal to one, right? So the power of X and Y shouldn't be, shouldn't be greater than one. If it is greater than one, then you, you no longer have a simple equation. Now you would have um, an equation such as a quadratic or some other form. All right, so all of these here, if you look at them carefully, you will see that they are simple equations. Now, if you look at the, in the, in the first two here, you notice that the variables that we have here are not the usual X and Y's, but here instead we have T. But it doesn't matter which letter of the alphabet you use as your variable, you treat it in the same way, the same principle that is being applied. All right. So um, one other thing that I wanted to realize too is that these equations would have two of the same variables, one on the left, one on the right. So the first one you have T on the left and T on the right. And the second one you have um, 
five on the x on the left and x on the right. All right, so so these would be we would call this the first type we would say one step equation because we could solve them probably in one step. But these we would have to carry out a number of steps. So these would be more like two steps or three steps. All right. So here, if we are to solve an equation with more than one of this, the variable that you are solving for, what should be the aim in solving this equation? Ms. Wilson, you want to help us with this? When, when we have, in this case, 7x on one side and 5x on the other side, what, we're, what are we supposed to do? Sir, um, are we going to interchange? I remember. All right. So here, once we have more than one of the same variable that that was, where the aim is to get all the variables of that same type on one side, and so that's the first step. You bring all the variables on one side and all the numbers on the other side, right? So that's the first step. So here, we would actually group the X's on one side and the numbers on the other side. So it means that the three on the left-hand side, if we decide to get all the X's to the left-hand side, then that three on the left-hand side should go to the right-hand side, and that five X on the right-hand side should come over to the left-hand side. Now, if, if, if we are doing it in a shortcut sense, what we really are doing to get, to get the X's on one side, we are basically interchanging. So what is on the left, we're kind of swapping out with what is on the right. So we bring over the five X on the, on the left, we bring this three on the right. So we're kind of swapping them over. But one thing that we should remember is that the sign's going to be opposite. Are the signs going to change? In this case where the five X would have been added on the right-hand side, when it goes to the left-hand side, now the five X is going to be subtracted. Likewise with the three, on the right-hand side, the three was added, but when it goes on to the left-hand side, it will be subtracted. So we could actually do the swap or the interchanging together. So we bring over the five X and we bring over the three X all at the same time. All right. So um, in that case, we would group all the X's on the left and keep all the numbers on the right. So now that we bring over the five X and it is being subtracted, now we apply what we would know in terms of positive and negative sign when we are adding or subtracting. So here we would have seven X subtract five X so we know on the left side that will leave us with two X. And on the right side, we are subtracting three from 17 and then we'll get 14. All right, now to get rid of the two, 